I'd like to give you some context first to um, what I'm going to tell you about. I'm going to give you sort of the story of how I got to where I am today, um, hopefully in, in not too much excruciating detail. Um, and then I'll try and sort of draw some uh, conclusions from that. And I'm obviously delighted to answer any questions you might have um, about it. Uh, in, I qualified uh, as a solicitor in 2003 and uh, left the firm that I trained at Lovells and uh, joined an American firm called Winston & Strawn that was just starting up in London. Um, I it was a very small office and we were sort of wondering what we were going to do and um, lo and behold an enormous piece of work came through the door um, rather luckily and for about the next five years or so um, I spent pretty much all of my time engaged on one enormous uh, dispute involving the Russian telecom sector. Um, that um, was great fun and I worked uh, with, with a team of people and primarily uh, one colleague who I will tell you a bit more about. And um, as that case was coming to an end, it was obvious that we weren't going to get any follow-on work for whatever reason. And we started um, following up some opportunities that came our way to work with uh, technology startups. Um, that was in sort of end of 2007 and uh, by the beginning of 2008, the Russian case had pretty much um, dried up for us. There was some uh, runoff work that some colleagues were involved in. And uh, sort of middle of 2008, we decided to really go for it and build from scratch a practice in, the, in this sector, working for technology startups and primarily uh, web startups. I'd always been a sort of early adopter of technology. I'd tinkered around with websites uh, before I did my training contract. And um, Barry uh, Vitu, my colleague who I did this with, um, being a bit older than me, he had been around as a lawyer in the, in the sort of first boom and done all the sort of um, IPO to bust in, 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 in the two weeks sort of cycle that um, uh, dot coms were going through back then. So we, we had a, a, a bit of a, a sort of a, a sales pitch uh, to go off with. And we did the sort of traditional lawyer thing of turning up to conferences and trying to make awkward conversation with people. And uh, Barry was referred to the sort of force field that appears around you the moment you say you're a lawyer and all the entrepreneurs want to go and talk to somebody uh, more interesting or at least doesn't want to take lots of money off them. Um, but we persevered and um, we, we sort of got to know people and, and we began to sort of build, um, if not a client base, at least a base of people who we knew. Um, and around that time, uh, we found that you know, th these, these young entrepreneurs, they were using social media, uh, we were connecting with them on social media, um, and we decided to you know, get on Twitter and see what they were all up to. And um, around that time, in sort of summer of 2008, just before the world, the world economy fell off the cliff, um, we decided we needed to do something to sort of supercharge our marketing. And um, we did this a really traditional lawyer thing of say, let's run an event, you know, a bit like this evening, let's get everybody in and we can talk at them. And maybe if we do that, when they have uh, legal needs, they all come and see us. Um, what we decided though, was that there were some other events going on in London at the time for the sort of tech community that had kind of funky names and um, uh, were a bit more interesting. We said we couldn't call it come and see lawyers at Winston & Strawn, which was my old firm. Um, and we decided to give it a name, and we call it Boot Law. Um, we'd registered a domain one day, and we set up a site uh, the next day and launched it that evening at a, market, at a networking event. Um, and a few uh, days later, through word of mouth and, and social media connections, we had about 30 people signed up, at which point we took our managing partner out for lunch and said, um, we've got some people coming to the office in a couple of weeks' time. We're going to hold a seminar. Oh, and by the way, we're going to give them beer and pizza afterwards. I hope that's all right. Um, he said, yeah, that, that sounds great. You know, good for you guys, you know, using your initiative. And we sort of said, well, we've got this sort of website. It's, it's sort of a website. Don't, you don't need to worry about it. Um, we, we, we just sort of uh, glossed over that a little bit with him. Um, and what we did, we set up this thing we call uh, Bootlaw. This is the, the current Bootlaw website. It's been through a couple of iterations. Um, we, could, we called it Bootlaw because of the bootstrapping or uh, bootcamp um, sort of 
uh, phrases and we managed to get the domain. It, it was um, bootlaw.org was available and then somebody sold me bootlaw.com and they wanted $600, but in the end they took 50, which I, was about the best bit of negotiation I've ever done. Um, and um, bootlaw is, is a very simple concept. It, it is simply the event that we run and we run it on a monthly basis. Um, people sort of think it's a website or uh, what, what is, you know, and clients assume we've set up a separate company or, or something like that. It, it's none of it. It's typical lawyers, we, you know, we, uh, <laughs> we don't look after any legal structure of our own. We've just sort of formed this thing. Um, it's a thing. It's out there. Uh, and I've got the passwords to it, which made it much easier to take with me when I left Winston and Strawn earlier this year and joined Pinson Masons. Um, this, is the, this is what the bootlaw front page looks like. Um, we've got our Twitter stream uh, going on in, in one column. We've got a sort of a blog. Uh, we put articles up, um, and they're in the middle column. And then on the left-hand column, uh, we've got a link to our next event, um, which uh, people can sign up to. Uh, and th next month in, in uh, October, we've got um, the general counsel from the FT coming to speak to startups to talk to them about what it's like being on the other side of these deals. And that's proving popular already. Um, we, don't, we don't put a lot of content through articles because now I've, uh, we've joined Pints and Masons. They've obviously got the fantastic Outlaw uh, website that produces tons of content, so there's no point in, in trying to compete. But we used to put more in the way of, um, of, sort of real you know, articles and stuff through, through it. Now it's more sort of uh, something just to publicize the events. Um, this is the Meetup website uh, that we use, meetup.com is a service, uh, where it's a startup itself out of New York. Um, you pay to set up a meetup on meetup.com, um, but it's fairly cheap. It's about $50 a quarter or something like that. Um, and it's a complete event management sort of piece of kit, essentially. It's all uh, web hosted. And um, you, you um, I mean, this, this, this um, has gone through various iterations as well, and I had a, a friendly web designer um, sort of make it look a bit nicer for me. But basically, we, we set up the initial page um, between Barry was on holiday in Spain, and he was sort of editing it online from the basement of uh, some, some Marbella hotel while I was back in the office uh, setting it all up. Um, but literally, we did, we did this in sort of the space of an afternoon to get the first one up and running. And now, if I want to put a new event up there, I just have to think of what we're going to do, um, uh, write you know, a few paragraphs of what the event's going to be about, um, hit submit, and we've got a live event. People can sign up automatically. They, they can, they, they can deregister themselves as well as register themselves. Um, they have to first register for, I should explain, they, should, they first have to register to join the group. Uh, and I sort of let them in or don't let them in, but generally let them in. Um, the only people I don't let in are kind of law students who think it sounds really interesting to go to uh, an event. I sort of write them a polite note saying they should just attend their lectures instead and um, not take up space at our event. Um, uh, and, and so pe people tell me what they're up to, that they're an entrepreneur and that they want to know more about um, legal issues. And then they're in. And once they're in, they get notifications of new events um, and so on through this website. And if they want to stop receiving um, email from us, they can deregister themselves, and we never get their email address. So it gives them complete confidence that by signing up, they're not going to be spammed for forever um, by by a law firm. Um, it, people can upload photos from the event, um, as has been. There's some pictures of me up there, in fact, um, uh, and they can just put them on there, and they they automatically get shown on the site. So it's a meetup itself is is a social network. Um, and we are using that uh, to, to run events, and it's, and it's fantastic um, because it just cuts out all the usual uh, rubbish that you have with um, you know, your secretary having to keep track of endless RSVP lists and how do you follow up and, and all of the, the usual pain that, that the law, law firms have with events. But it's not just about the events. The events were sort of the initial idea, but boot law itself turned into a bit of a brand. And uh, Barry and I got known as the guys who do boot law. Um, and we registered an account for boot law on Twitter. Oh, sorry. Um, the, other, the other nice thing about this, it allows people to leave group reviews on the meetup site so people can see um, how you're doing. So there's some randomly selected glowing reviews um, there for you. And um, this was us at our old firm where we were sort of packed in. And then we gave them beer and pizza. 
um, afterwards in our conference room. And this is at our new swanky offices in Pimps and Masons. This was um, about a week ago. Um, we've got a bit more space and we've got some nice uh, networking space there as well. Um, it's always nice to show off our, our new um, office at Crown Place. And um, Pimpsons have been fantastic in supporting um, the sort of transition. Um, and this is the Bootlaw Twitter account. Um, we've, uh, um, you know, we just run it. We, we never came up with a sort of strategy of what we were going to put through it. Uh, we, we respond to people. We, we joke with people. We put links to legal articles. We put updates about our events. Um, we put whatever we feel like. It, myself and Barry have got you know, access rights to it, and, and it's up to us. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we are responsible adults, and, and we try not to embarrass anybody. Um, but um, you know, we, we do use it for, for fun as well. And, and try and entertain people. But definitely the, the point earlier about using Twitter to engage with people is much more powerful. Um, and Twitter's had this other effect. By being on Twitter and monitoring um, who else is on Twitter, um, I mean, it's great for us because a lot of our clients are there as well. And I, I do agree this may not apply to some of you. Um, but um, when your client's on there, it's enormously powerful because what we found is people have said things like, I need a lawyer uh, to help me with my terms and conditions. And um, who do I go to? And people have come back, those guys from Boot Law. And we see somebody mentioning Boot Law, and we've been able to dive in and, um, and get work that way. And I've got, um, I've got a couple of really quite large matters on at the moment where my first contact with the client was via Twitter. Um, now, we, you know, it wasn't just Twitter that got me the client. In one case, um, I'd been involved in a deal where um, the, the, the guy who's now a client uh, was sort of tangentially involved. So he, I knew his name, he knew my name. It was, a, it was a warmish introduction. But he had put something up saying, I need somebody to look at an NDA for me. Um, there's stuff in I'm not familiar with. And I jumped in and said, yeah, I, I can help you with that. And I, I gave it a 10-minute review for free. And um, you know, nothing happened. But a few, you know, time, time passed, and now I've actually got quite a, a large deal on for, for, for that client. Um, another client got referred to us, and um, within about 15 minutes, we were on the phone to each other. He asked me for a, ref for a reference, which I gave him, and within, within an hour, we had instructions. Um, so this sort of stuff does work. And I've got, um, and, and it's also great, because when, you, when you've got a problem, you can use uh, Twitter as a bit of a sounding board. So um, in pre preparing to speak this evening, um, I, I asked the, the Twitterati if they had any tips, and somebody came straight back with a link to an article about using social media. Um, so that just shows how it can be work, worked another way. Um, but uh, we had exactly this situation over the summer. Um, this chap, Christian Lang, who runs a pretty decent-sized startup in Denmark called TradeShift, um, said, could, he, could somebody recommend good UK lawyers for drafting user-friendly terms and conditions? And um, uh, uh, somebody I know, and I've obviously favorited his tweet, which is why it's got the star there, um, who's, uh, he's a regular attendee at Boot Law, uh, and he was very, he, he's, a, he's in PR, so he says nice things. Um, um, so he gave some rather overtop recommendation for us. But I, I got a, a nice bit of work out of that um, directly, which I wouldn't have otherwise have got. Um, and then here's another client um, of mine, a guy called Nick Halstead, who runs a very successful um, startup uh, based in Reading. And he was at that time using a different law firm and having a bad experience. But we'd met him and got to know him. And, um, and he, and he um, tweeted uh, at the time that he'd wished, he kind of wished he'd gone to Specsavers. He wished he'd gone and, and used us instead. Um, and, um, and then recently, um, his company, Datasift, has just raised $6 million uh, from VCs in the States. Although um, I didn't do the US fundraising, you can imagine that a startup that gets funded to that team becomes a rather better client. Um, and, and so just some examples of um, sort of Twitter uh, doing the job um, it's supposed to do. And I'd just say, um, in conclusion, the sort of the tail end of the story, as it were, the journey that Barry and I have been through uh, doing uh, boot law is that um, Barry decided to go back to our roots uh, that we'd put down with the Russian telecoms dispute. And there were sort of allegations, you may be surprised to hear, there were allegations of corruption and um, skullduggery in that case. So when the new Bribery Act 
uh, came out last year, um, or was, uh, was published, and now it's come into force this year. But when that was sort of coming down the tracks, he decided to leverage social media uh, to become a to position himself as an expert on uh, the Bribery Act. He registered thebriberyact.com and an associated Twitter account. And he puts a ton of content through that. Um, our moving over to Pinson Mason, he now runs the, the Bribery Act pra practice at Pinson Mason's. And I sort of get on with the boot law practice. Um, and his blog, The Bribery Act, now gets tens of thousands of hits every month and has become a sort of recognized um, source of, of, of authoritative source for um, all things to do with the Bribery Act. So uh, we sort of took our learning, as it were, from using from doing boot law, or he did, and has applied it to that. And that sort of, uh, as you um, can imagine, has sort of made all the difference uh, to to our real life legal practice.